Welcome to our Veterans Week celebration here on Mission Park Cares. And we are so honored to celebrate the individuals who wear the uniform of our country. Today we're going to show you a special museum that preserves the history of the troops right here in San Antonio. And we'll also meet active duty officers who are bringing tremendous encouragement to those here and abroad. Right now we want to show you an incredible tribute of blood, sweat and tears shed by every branch of service. Kristen, will you show us what you're talking about? To start us off for Veterans Day, we're here with a, an accomplished veteran, a police officer, and a talented artist, Pinko. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Kristen. It's always a pleasure. So we've been following you for quite a while now on this magnificent piece. Can you give us an update? Tell us okay, uh, especially for those that, that haven't been following us, um, this piece has been over a year and a half in the making. Uh, it's a large American flag made out of wood and resin. Uh, the, the red, white, and blue is all resin, and it contains actual blood, sweat, and tears from veterans and active military from all branches. All branches are represented, and, and they have all contributed to this uh, amazing piece. Uh, now, what is it going to take to get us home on it? Almost there. We're, we're after, after such a long time, to, today is the day. I just need to put down the center placard. I've, I've got it centered and taped off. And then I've got two dog tags uh, left to adhere to the piece. So these dog tags, Kristen, are, are very special. Everyone who participated uh, in donating either the blood, the sweat, or the tears, uh, all veterans were active military. They got their name uh, on the, uh, the piece uh, on the dog tag to represent their contribution. So we pick up, I don't want to mess anything uh, up. Sure. Can you pick up the plaque and Absolutely. And read it to us? Absolutely. Like I said, it's America's DNA, blood, sweat, and tears. And I've got my real name on here, and then, of course, my uh, the name that I go under when I paint my art, which is Pinko. So, how is this going to get attached to the piece of art? There, there's actually two strips on the back uh, that, that I'll appeal, but I'm actually going to add some extra. Um, I've got some epoxy here. Mm -hmm. And this is what I've been putting down the uh, ID tags with because I don't want them to ever uh, fall off or come off of the piece. So they are epoxied on. Okay, so I'm just going to mix the epoxy up. And if you want, if you want to peel those uh, things off for me, that would be great. How did you come up with this idea? It, it's something, I mean, you know, you hear the term blood, sweat, and tears um, a lot when you're referring to people's work ethic. And I've, as an artist, I'm always looking for new ideas. and. While I'm researching other contemporary artists, you know, I've seen other artists that'll put blood, you know, in a, pro, in a contemporary art piece. I've seen them put, uh, you know, a lot of different things, but I was like, no one's done blood, sweat, and tears. And then when I think of blood, sweat, and tears, the military, being a veteran, the military automatically came to mind. The red, white, and blue, it just seemed like a perfect combination. And if, you know, I could do something for the veterans and something that's going to raise money for the veterans, uh, you know, and have the ability to do it, I'm like, why not? You know, why not use my talents to, to be able to raise money and, and help those in need? So we're gonna put this in here. All right, and then I'm, I'm gonna use the same epoxy for these last two ID tags right here, okay? Every, everything's just calculated. You know, being military and being the, the nature of this piece, I wanted everything to be just perfect. So all the measurements, everything's equally spaced. Dress right dress, as we used to say in the military. So it's like when you're looking down the rank and files and everybody is shoulder to shoulder and just perfect in alignment. So Pinko, in a perfect world, where do you see this piece being displayed over the next year or, or where might people be able to see it? Chris and I would love for this piece to be displayed at military museums across the United States and art galleries alike. You know, a lot of people uh, that are into contemporary art would love to see it as well. So I have already started sending emails and phone calls and messages to various museums and, uh, and military museums. So that's the plan. I, I would love for it to uh, get some exposure on the military bases and, and the museums there as well as the art galleries. And she is complete. Well, congratulations. This is a special moment. I mean, wow, it looks amazing. It really, really does. I can't wait to see it up. Take a look now. I mean, how does this make you feel? I mean, it really is a long journey to get where you are today. It, uh, it, excuse me. It's, uh, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. It's very overwhelming. Um, you know, again, I did it for the brothers and sisters uh, who are out there fighting for us. 
and for something to actually have their blood, sweat, and tears into it and the meaning behind it uh, and what it represents and symbolizes and, and to, to be a part of that and to be the artist that came up with that uh, is just overwhelming. Is, is There's such a, a mix of emotions. There's happiness, there's sadness, there's grief, there's excitement, there's joy, there's euphoria. I mean, it's, it's everything in one, so it's so hard to describe. I mean, it's just, my stomach is just in knots right now. Well, I wish you a very happy and very proud Veterans Day, along with everyone else out there. But thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chris. You everything. guys have been amazing. You are amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Now it's time for a blessing for the finest fighting forces in the world. Good morning. My name is Mark Nickett, and I am a chaplain at Fort Sam Houston, Texas. You know, liberty is something that we hold very dear as Americans. And that liberty is defended by the men and women of our armed services. They are a resolute force, an absolute solid bulwark against those who would deprive any nation of their liberty. Join with me in giving thanks to them for their sacrifice, for their service, and for our freedom. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer, our rock, our fortress, our solid place on which to stand. We honor our veterans today, men and women who proudly gave their absolute best when they were called on to serve and defend our country and our freedoms. We remember today all the military personnel, past and present, at home and abroad, and we acknowledge that their service and sacrifice enables us to enjoy the benefits of freedom. We ask that you would bless those who have served. We ask that your blessing would be upon them and that they would be rewarded in every way. We respect them, we thank them, and we honor them. Lord, we also thank you for the brave men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice in the service of our country. We ask for your blessing for their families and that you would be gracious to them, that you would surround them with peace and that your blessing and goodness would be evident in their lives. Lord, we also honor those who are currently serving. We ask that you would provide them with your protection, your strength and your peace, that you would provide for all their needs and that you would protect their families from harm and allow them to flourish wherever service to our nation takes them. Finally, Lord, we give special recognition to our wounded warriors. A lot of our heroes were wounded, both physically and emotionally, in service to our country. We ask for your healing for those who have been wounded, body and soul, that they would be given the best treatments available and that your healing would be in the midst of those treatments. We ask you, Lord, that you would bring healing to them, that you would bring grace, and that you would bring wholeness. In your holy name I pray, amen. Kristen, you found a military museum right here in our own backyard, and I think everybody needs to know about it. You're right, Dick. It's just inside the quadrangle at Fort Sam Houston. Let's go see it. We're here at Fort Sam Houston with Jackie Davis and just a historical place, Fort Sam Houston Museum. And Jackie, before we get started, will you tell us a little bit about this picture? Yes, this is a picture from uh, the end of World War I. Uh, this is the soldiers that are the 90th Infantry Division, which was the local reserve unit, or will turn into that, uh, getting their local hometown victory parade. So they made a temporary wooden arch in front of the Alamo and they got to parade through that here at home. Jackie, that's the Alamo behind it, but let's find out first, how did Fort Sam Houston originally get started? Well, how it originally got started was not as Fort Sam Houston, but as the post at San Antonio. And about a month and a half before Texas became officially a state, the Army sent some soldiers out to scout and find a place for a quartermaster depot. They ended up in San Antonio and the biggest building available that nobody was using was the Alamo. And so the Army uh, started using the Alamo as a quartermaster depot, and then from that, all else grew. And so uh, we eventually moved out here, 
It wasn't until 1890 that we became officially Fort Sam Houston. So why is it called a fort instead of a base? For the Army, uh, base is not something you call an installation. Uh, we generally would have camps or forts. Uh, this is a, a long involved thing and it evolves over the many years. When we were originally founded, uh, you wouldn't call what we had here a fort either. They called it the post. And, but by the time they got around to naming us, they were naming all of their large installations forts, and so the, it became a fort. What we are is a piece of real estate that you, was used as, in effect, a base. So we, it was as a place where you had the headquarters for the, the, the region that we were in. It would have the hospital here. We had the, the quartermaster depot where the supplies were. We had the arsenal where the ammunition came from. There was a regiment that would be here, assigned here, and so that regiment would be directly involved in things. And so what we were the first in the 1850s, when we just became part of the uh, United States, was fighting Indians. And so the frontier was like the west side of San Antonio. We're inside the original fort. What, tell us a little bit about this and, and what can people find here? So, this is the oldest building on the piece of property that is now called Fort Sam Houston, but of course we've actually been in town since 1845 with those soldiers arriving during the, just before the Mexican War. What we tell here is that story. So we start in 1845 with the arrival of the Army here, and we go chronologically through everything to where we are now. So we don't talk about the Army's wars, we talk about how the Army's wars affect Fort Sam and how Fort Sam has affected them. And, or you know, have helped out in those. And so that's the story we tell. And so the, this is the oldest building here, and so this is the most appropriate place to have a museum, is in that oldest building. So if people want to come visit the museum this summer as a family, how do they do that? Who do they talk to? Okay, first off, the museum is open to anybody that can get on to Fort Sam Houston. So if you have military ID or a friend that you can bring along that has a military ID, you can come through any of the gates and they can uh, come in with the ID. If you do not have something like that, then you'll need to talk to the people at the visitor center, which is the security police people here at Fort Sam. The museum is open Monday through Friday, uh, 10 to four right now. We're hoping eventually in the future to have Saturday hours again. Jackie, thank you so much. You are a wealth of information and what a treasure. And thank you for keeping the history that's so important uh, to us in this community. And, and honestly, I think our entire country alive. Thank you very much. Dick, last week you introduced us to Skyler. He brings so much passion to his work. What is he doing now? Well, all I can say is Skyler Herndon's work has really taken off. And here's a bird's eye view. Scouter, we see a lot of roofs all over San Antonio, all over Texas and the United States, but what makes a metal roof so popular with people these days? Well, you know, that's a great question, Dick. Um, we have a lot of different things that people are looking for now as homeowners. We're looking for sustainability. We're looking for value. And we're looking for longevity. And metal roofing in general, especially whenever it's installed correctly, can give you a whole variety of advantages by adding a metal roof to cover their house their attic temperature is going to be 30 to 40 degrees lower than it would be with the traditional asphalt shingle and so that reduces the stress that you see coming from your ac units it lowers your electricity bills and in addition to that you're also looking at we're in the, one of the hail capitals of the world and so it is important that you have a product that's up there that's willing, that's able to sustain the weather elements. Scouter, you do such high-end work like our Life Center here, and, yes, but not only the Life Center, but you also do schools and you do you know, custom and luxury homes. Why do so many people trust you and finished work? Well, Dick, that's a great question. And um, one of the things I'm very proud of, just the same way that I met you, is uh, we're a referral based company. And so we don't typically do all the advertising and marketing. Um, most all my clients were referred to me and it's because we're proven that our guys are reliable, that they can pass background checks, that they will actually show up and do what they say they're gonna do. And that not only that, we make sure that we have employees that watch the project, that 
are there on site documenting it from start to finish. Skylar, as I visit with you, you know, I can just see how excited you are about, quite frankly, this roof, you know, and uh, all the other roofs and all the other things. I mean, what really puts the spring in your stuff? Well, you know, one thing that we have in common, Dick, is what we have children of similar age. Um, you've got twins that are 10 years old. I've got four boys, nine, seven, four, and 10 months. And truly what drives me is the fact that my boys are gonna have something to be proud of. Uh, we take a lot of effort and care with our homeowners. That reflects on our reviews. And uh, this is something that I'm not doing for me. I'm doing for them. This is something that I wanna pass on to generations. You know, Skyler, we talk about you know hands-on and seeing things and all the rest of it. But I know, and I've seen you, you have a drone. Is there any chance we could fly that drone today and take a look at what you're doing on just on this project alone? Oh, of course. It's one thing that I do every night is make sure that my batteries are charged. <laughs> so we're ready to go. Uh, I'll hook them up and we'll take a spin around. His batteries are charged in more ways than one. Okay, Skyler, we, you've got the eye in the sky, so to speak. Yes, sir. Would you mind showing me what your guys have been up to today? Of course. So guys are all harnessed up. They are up there right now. Let's go over the top here. Yeah, that's a good point. They're harnessed up, meaning that you follow all the right rules and regulations for OSHA and that sort of thing. Absolutely. It's very important when you're doing these commercial projects. I mean, you can see where we're at. There's a lot of eyes on us and, you know, safety is very important. Our company actually just won an award from our insurance provider. Why did you name the company Finish Work? Well, finished work, you know, is something that we took. It's a biblical reference, um, the finished work of Jesus Christ. And it's something that's important to us, um, you know, being godly men, uh, being good examples and role models. And uh, it's basically just a reference to him and uh, keep us in, uh, in his good graces and make sure that we represent what he stands for. Skyler, if uh, someone wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way to get that done? Well, you know, my phone number is the one that's listed on our banners, and uh, I'm very active in our company, and I'm, I'm the guy that you call. You know, you just call 512-299-6926. You can shoot me an email, Skyler Herndon at finishedworkroofing.com. Very responsive, and uh, you'll hear from me, and we'll, I'll get you to the right person in my company if I'm not the one to help you. Skyler Herndon at finishedwork.com. Yes, sir. Finishedworkroofing.com. Finishedworkroofing.com. Thank you. Hey, San Antonio. I am Chaplain Brocious. I am stationed here at Fort Sam Houston, uh, the Army North Operations Chaplain. And we just want to give a shout out this Veterans Day and appreciation for all those who have served our country, both past and present. This nation was built upon those who labored with sweat and blood and who answered the call to wear the nation's uniform. Let us never forget the cost of freedom and the resolve of the American warrior. Can I pray for all of our veterans and for those that have answered that call to secure our liberty? Heavenly Father, I pray for those who are serving in uniform, those who are stationed right here at Joint Base San Antonio, and those spread across our country, serving in various deployments and in missions. God, I pray that you'll give them safety. I pray that you will bless their families and the great sacrifice, the tremendous sacrifice of having a loved one serving in uniform. God, we also pray for those who've gone on before us and who have paved the way for freedom. For those living among us today, we thank them for their sacrifice. God, and we pray that they would always know that their service was not in vain to our country, that we are a grateful nation. And, and Lord, for those not living among us today, Lord, we pray that their memory would continue to live on and that their legacy would continue to inspire others to courageous leadership. And so, Father, again, we thank you for the great sacrifice of serving our country, the call to wear the nation's cloth. And we just pray your blessing upon those both now and in the past who have served our country and that you would guide them and their families and bless them. And may we never forget those sacrifices. 
For it's in your name we pray, amen. And so if you've served our country, we say thank you for making that sacrifice, fulfilling that responsibility and that duty to serve your nation, whether you currently serve in uniform or you've served in the past. And those that are not, be sure to thank a veteran on this Veterans Day and show appreciation for the great sacrifice for our nation. So hey, make it a great week and happy Veterans Day. God bless. Thank you for joining us for this special salute on Veterans Week here on Mission Park Cares. And we are so proud at Mission Park to serve these families who wear our uniform right here in San Antonio. We love our country and we love the men and women who defend our freedom. Thank you so much for being with us today. And remember, at Mission Park, it's our mission to care.